Hey people, I'm back after eight long months. This video will not explain where I've been for the last eight months. That I will explain in a dedicated video. In this video, you will see all of my improvements that I made to my quick reload toilet paper system. The video is divided up into three major parts. In part one, I will show you why my old design needed some major improvements and give a demonstration of the new system. In part two, I will explain my material choice, some of the features and the different configurations for this toilet paper reload system. In part three, I will explain the slicing of the models and some very important print settings. So feel free to skip ahead to any of these sections if you need something in particular. The design is not only bulky, but also as you can see, you can knock the toilet paper out of the holder. So people suggested I should add a lock. So I did. I had never come around to print the lock for the left side. So hence why I'm holding it with my hand. Snapping forward to the new design. Just kidding, these yellow arms are for the OG reloaders. So, how do you keep the movement and add locking at the same time? Yeah, by using a compliant arm. As you can see, the roll cannot be knocked out anymore. And the best part is, no special action needs to be taken to set the lock. For the arms, I tested PLA, ABS, PETG and nylon. PLA is very stiff and makes a very strong spring. ABS on the other hand is more compliant and deforms too fast for my liking, as can be seen by the whitish marks. PETG is stiffer than ABS, but more compliant than PLA, but it springs back into place very nicely. The arms can be permanently deformed if you push them too far. And what I show here is an extreme case and this will not happen in your holder. But if for some reason an arm breaks, you can swap it out by this clever screw system. And then as last, we have nylon. If you can print nylon, you should make the arms out of nylon. This is absolutely the best arm you can make. I will now tell you about the different configurations that you can make. So here you can see two yellow arms. They look the same, but they have different angles on which the free movement stops and the spring takes over. So depending on the width of your toilet paper or your kitchen towel and the material of your arms, you can tweak the desired operation by choosing a different angle of where the springs kick in. The mounting of the parts can be done by double-sided tape. In the previous version, I had a snap screw system, but nowadays with the VHB tape from 3M, it is so strong that double-sided taping should be sufficient. And as a bonus, if you decide to get the files, they are for sale on my page on cults3d.com. You will get two step files and these files contain a left and a right pivot part. So if you need a very specific custom mounting option, you can use these files and for example Fusion 360 to sketch your own holder. So I'm asking if you do so, keep the models to yourself. Oh, uh, fun fact. Uh, did you know that you cannot record in your toilet? Trust me. So these are all the body parts included in the download. And as you can see, there are two separate towers. And these are both the right version. So in order to get a matching pair, you need to make a copy of a tower, then mirror that copy, and then the mirror of that copy will become the left version. And then together they will form a pair. The two bodies that have a fixed space are 110 and 106 millimeter wide respectively. So if there is a demand for a different width, I can put that online quite easily. But keep in mind that there are models for you available uh, to get one up yourself. Moving on to the screws, uh, these are left and right hand threaded screws. So keep that in mind when you screw them in the base. They're also labeled L and R, so you know which one is which, and they come in a pair as one STL. The models were designed with a layer height of 0.2 in mind, so I suggest that you use that height uh, to print these models. 
Furthermore, I use two perimeter lines and four top and four bottom lines. For the infill, I use 15% and the rest of the settings is really up to what your printer can handle. Here you can see a list with all the different arm angle variations, where the revision one is a slightly more kink resistant spring body. And the 75% is the OG quick reload no spring version. The spring arms require some special attention to print. They can be printed in groups of two, but not more. You need to place the models into this orientation. This orientation helps to prevent travel moves happen in the thin, springy part of the arm. In combination to this orientation, you need to turn on a feature called avoid crossing perimeters. The Z seam position should be on aligned and not on random. Here you can see the Z seam aligned on a thicker part of the base. Here in the preview, you can see that the spring part of the arms is nicely constructed of two perimeter lines that run continuously. And this is exactly how the arm should be printed. If the slicer is adding gap filling between the two perimeter lines, you need to increase the extrusion width until the slicer will print only two perimeter lines. It's almost time to wrap up the video. I need to mention that you need to print these at 100% infill and perhaps you need to tweak the flow of the filament a little bit. The last thing I want to show you is some cool time lapses of the parts being printed. So please enjoy the time lapses. Thank you all for watching and remember, just try to DIY.